Uh, I'm Jimmy Shao. I'm from the University of Electronic Science and Technology of China. Uh, I'm going to talk about community detection based on distance dynamics. Uh, this is a joint work of my colleagues, Zi Chao Han, Qin Li Yang, and Tao Zhou. So nowadays, uh, more and more networks have been generated in diverse fields. So for all this network, they often co share a common characteristic, which is the community structure, like all these networks. <laughs> Exploring community structure is essential to understanding their intrinsic structure and the potential functions. So the question is, how can we find the intrinsic community structure in large-scale networks? Uh, during the last several decades, many algorithms have been proposed, such as minimum cuts, normalized cuts, modularity, random work, and multi-level clusterings. Uh, for all these classical algorithms, although they achieve some success, however, there are also some challenges. Uh, for example, uh, for most of the established algorithms, they are difficult to handle large-scale networks uh, due to the time constraints or memory limitations. And the second one is, when, although many algorithms have been proposed, they are difficult to find the intrinsic communities in networks. So which means that the community is maybe with, without high quality. Uh, the last one maybe is the parameter setting. So for many algorithms, they need to specify the number of communities. However, if we have low knowledge about networks, we, it's very difficult to specify. So in light of these problems, um, the question is, how can we intuitively detect natural communities with high quality in large scale networks? Okay, so in this talk, I will try to introduce a new viewpoint for community detection, which is distance dynamics. So what is the distance dynamics? Actually, the basic idea is quite simple. Uh, we want to simulate the change of the edge distance over time and to automatically to find these communities over time. So specifically, we view a given network as a dynamic system. And then we simulate the distance dynamics based on different inter interaction patterns, uh, which we will introduce later. So based on this uh, interaction models, uh, finally, we, we can see the changes of this distance. We will see all this edge distance will converge a stable state, uh, which we call it as an attractor. So this community structure can be intuitively identified. So this is a basic idea. To illustrate this basic idea, let's look at the following finger, for example. Assuming we have a social network with different communities here with different colors, uh, each person has some links with uh, some, for example, its neighbors. Uh, for us, we try to, I mean, to view this network as a dynamic system. So here, each person try to interact with others. Uh, at the beginning, uh, we suppose that uh, there is some distance among this person, for example, relationship among these persons. After that, we try to propose an interaction model to simulate the, I mean, the relationship or distance among these persons based on different interaction patterns. And, and we found that through these interactions, after several time steps, all this distance in the same communities tended to converge into, I mean, the, to zero, which means that all this distance will converge and the communities can be intuitively identified. So this is a very basic idea for, for this algorithm. As we say that, we want to, I mean, simulate the distance dynamics in this network. So we first should be to define the interacting patterns, I mean, among these loads. Here we have a very simple assumption. Uh, if two loads are linked each other, so these two loads will attract each other and make this distance become shorter. So this is a basic assumption, or maybe we call it rules. So relying on this uh, basic assumption, we can say that the edge distance actually is influenced by the three different types of loads, 
which means that direct linked loads, common labors, and exclusive labors. Uh, let's look at the following finger, for example. For a given age between U and V, and we will see that the, actually the distance is influenced by the directly linked loads U and V, and their common labors, and also their exclusive labors uh, respectively. So according to these three different types of loads, and then we introduce our interaction patterns. Uh, let's look at these three interaction patterns separately. So for the first interaction, as we say that, so this is influenced from the direct linked loads, because these two loads attract each other, so this interaction will make this distance be become shorter. For the second situation, is the influence from the common labors. For example, for the common labor X, because X attracts U and also attracts V, so this, I mean, interactions will make, also make this distance become shorter. For the third situation, uh, situation uh, is the influence from the, I mean, exclusive labors. For this situation, it is a little more complicated. For example, let's look at the exclusive labor X, because X attracts U, I mean, close to X. So uh, in that way, this interaction may be will make this uh, distance become shorter or make this distance become longer. It depends on, it depends on how similar between X and V. Okay. So based on these uh, three different inter interaction patterns, finally we propose our interaction model. So our interaction model is quite simple and intuitive, which means that for a given, I mean, H distance uh, at time point T plus one, equals the distance at time point T plus the influence from these three different interaction patterns, which means that directed uh, mean interaction, the influence from the common labors and the, uh, the influence from the exclusive labors. Let's look at them, uh, I mean, separately. For the, this directed interaction, we will see that, uh, I mean, the change of the distance actually depends on how similar between U and V and also their corresponding degree, correct? And for the second uh, situ uh, situation for this uh, um, common labors, and this is similar to this uh, direct link uh, interaction, but here we should introduce another term which to capture how similar between X and U or X and V. If X is the same to to V, and uh, this interaction, I mean, influence is trans directly transferred to this uh, direct, uh, directed interaction. Okay, for the third situation, it's a little more, more complicated as we see that. Here, we should check whether X is similar to V or not. If X is sim very similar to V, and this will make this uh, to be shorter. So here, we just introduce a parameter we call it as cohesion parameter. If this similarity is larger than this, uh, this threshold, and they ha uh, it has this uh, positive effect, otherwise it's negative effect, which makes this distance become longer. Okay, after we define this interaction model, finally, we can just simulate this uh, distance dynamics. Uh, for this distance dynamics, it involves three steps. Uh, Initialization, I mean, I mean dynamics, and the community detection. So for here, for example, uh, for, for this initialization, actually we can just compute the Yakut distance for each edge. So we have an initial distance for each edge. And after that, we can simulate the, I mean, the change of this distance. And we will see uh, the distance, I mean, among, among loads in the same community will gradually become shorter and shorter, uh, while all the distance between this uh, different community will become larger and larger. So finally, we can see that the, all this distance will converge to stable states. And then we can just remove all these edges with distance of one. And so we can see that the community structures is intuitively or literally uh, identified based on this, their intrinsic collectivities. 
we didn't, uh, I mean, define any user-defined criterion to do that, but it's driven by this uh, uh, networks itself. Uh, after that, also we say that we should do some parameter setting, because in this model, uh, we introduce a parameter to control whether exclusive labels pose the negative or positive effect. We will say that a larger lambda will produce uh, small size communities, while small lambda will produce large, say, uh, large size communities. And through experiments, many experiments, we also find that this parameter is quite robust to this, uh, I mean, community, community detection results. Uh, between this range, from 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. Also, we can just look at this uh, uh, very simple synthetic graph. And for this graph, it's very simple, and we find a wide range, a wide range for the same results. And also, we can say from different parameters, actually, a tractor maybe can allow for hierarchical analysis. OK, uh, let's look at the experiments. Uh, we first evaluate our algorithms on some synthetic data sets. Here we have two types of synthetic graphs. So the first is to add some noise in these graphs, and the second is to the graphs, uh, the graphs uh, consist of communities with different communities. And we also compare our algorithm with many st state-of-the-art algorithms, for example, classical algorithms, NCAT, MCL, modularity, MET, METIS, InfoMap, and Loven. So we found that our algorithm actually uh, is comparable for many algorithms and also outperform with many other algorithms on these two synthetic data sets. After that, we further evaluate our algorithm on some real data sets. Here for real data set, we have two, uh, we have two situations. The first is the networks with label information, which means that we have, have the ground truth for these community structures. So in that way, we can just use some well known external measures, such as normalized mutual information, or adjusted random index, and purity. So uh, from this uh, very, I mean, we are low in this networks, we can see that actually our algorithm can I mean, perform quite well, and in most cases outperforms other algorithms. Uh, for the second situation is for evaluate this algorithm on some large scale networks. However, for this large, large scale networks, because they have low, I mean, label information, so we just use some internal evaluation measures such as modularity or NCAT to evaluate that. Uh, and also we found that our algorithm can produce readable results and actually I should say that should outperform our other algorithms. After that, we also to show the desirable properties of our algorithms for small community detection and ordinary detection. Uh, we, we just, uh, I mean, to check this, uh, I mean, quality of these communities, and we also can find that our algorithm can find many, I mean, communities with different size. For traditional algorithms such as NCAT or modularity, they tend to find this, uh, I mean, equal size communities. But for our algorithms, we are not only to detect high quality communities, but also, I mean, different sizes. And also, our algorithm allows to find uh, to some outliers. Uh, finally, we just evaluate our algorithm on, on this uh, runtime, and from here, uh, actually, because our tractor just investigates the distance dynamics, so the time, com com time complexity is against to the, the linear or the number of this edge, so it can handle very large data sets. Okay. So from this finger, we also see that our algorithm is quite fast. So finally, let's come to the conclusion. Uh, in this talk, we will introduce a new community detection algorithms uh, from a new viewpoint, which is distance dynamics. Um, the second is our algorithm allows detecting small communities and outliers, and also it is scalable. Uh, finally, our algorithm don't need to specify the number of communities and just need to specify the cohesion parameter. But for this cohesion parameter, it is quite intuitive to specify. 
Uh, that's all. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Um, we have quite some time for questions. So, uh, any questions? Yes, uh, over there. Hello. Uh, Hello. I want to ask how to extend your uh, algorithm to detect overlapping communities. I mean, when there is like a, uh, in between overlapping, they have very close distance in the, in the intersection between communities, but within the communities, there are like further distance between uh, nodes. Uh, uh, you, you mean that's extend my algorithm to some other community? To I mean, this is like distinct. Uh, uh, disjoint Over communities, but how to overlap communi overlapping action. communities? Uh, actually, uh, in this work, we didn't consider this, uh, I mean, overlap community action. But maybe we can extend somehow, because as we say that, if this for this overlapping uh, community structure, and during this, uh, I mean, distance dynamics, maybe for this, uh, a little, this loads, I mean, on this overlapping communities, they have different, uh, I mean, dynamic, dynamic distance. I mean, different dynamic behaviors. So maybe from this aspect, we can just to, to, to find, that, find it. Um, any other question? Yes, Christos. Uh, very nice work. I was oh, interested thanks. in, in, the, in the, the lambda parameter seems to be good for any graph. If the values between 0.4 and 0.6, this yeah. is good for any graph or just the uh, yeah. top example? Um, for, uh, I, I check many, many algorithms. For not only for this centric, uh, centric graph, but also for all these uh, real world graphs. Also for our experiments, so we just specified the, lamb, uh, the, the value is 0 0.5. So for all these experiments. So actually, we can say that it's performed quite well. Yeah. Okay, okay. thanks. Any more questions? Okay, I have a question. Um, you chose three different inter interactions. Did you consider others, and did you um, eliminate something else, or do you think you're missing something? Uh, yeah, that's that's a good question, actually. Um, um, I, we just uh, proposed this uh, three different interaction patterns because we think that it's very intuitive and natural. Actually, we can just extend uh, this uh, um, pattern of. Uh, for them extend these patterns from different aspects because from here maybe we think about more about social networks. For example, the interaction so attract each other. But for different situations, maybe you have different interaction patterns. So maybe for specific applications, we can consider different ways. Okay. 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 Let's thank the speaker again. Thanks. You can sit down.